All right, next we're gonna look at section 6.2, which is applications of the normal distribution. Now in section 6.1, we were looking at standard normal distributions, and we saw how easy those kind of problems are um, because we can just use certain functions in our calculator um, to figure stuff out. Well, what happens if your distribution is just like a regular normal distribution and not standard normal? Well, the good news is that we can transform all normally distributed variables into a standard normally distributed variable. And the way that we do that is we actually just use um, our z-score formula. So we've seen this before. Um, in general, your z-score is found by doing uh, the value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. If you want to write that down in symbols, it is um, z equals x minus mu all over sigma. So that'll be the formula that we'll use to transform a normal variable into a standard normal variable. So in this section, we're just gonna look at a few application questions. So let's do our first one. So example six says that an adult has on average 5.2 liters of blood. Um, assume the variable is normally distributed and has a standard deviation of 0.3. Find the percentage of people who have less than 5.4 liters of blood in their system. Okay, so on that first curve, I'm gonna go ahead and label um, the information that I have here. So it says that the average is 5.2, so I'm gonna put that in the middle of my curve. And then we're trying to find the percent of people um, who have less than 5.4 liters of blood. So I'm gonna put 5.4 on there, and then I want the, the area underneath the curve that's less than that. So I'm gonna shade to the left there. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is transform that variable. So we're gonna start by doing Z equals, and then it's gonna be our X value, which is the 5.4, minus mu, which is the average, so minus 5.2, and then you divide that by the standard deviation, which is 0.3. So you figure out 5.4 minus 5.2 all over 0.3, and that comes out to be 2 thirds. Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking our normal distribution curve, and we're basically just like, it's almost like we're picking it up and we're moving it so that it's now centered at zero. That way it's gonna be a standard normal distribution. So now our mean or the average is at zero. And what we did was we took that 5.4 and we basically figured out that when we move our curve, um, it's gonna be two thirds instead. Okay, and we're still looking for the area to the left. And let's see, so when we're finding the area under the curve, that's gonna be normal CDF. So we'll do lower bound, upper bound, mu and sigma. So the lower bound is gonna be negative infinity. That's be shaded all the way to the left there. So we'll do negative E99. And then the upper bound is gonna be where the shading stops, which is at two thirds. And then mu is zero, since this is now a standard normal, and sigma is one for the same reason, it's a standard normal curve now. So we'll put that into our calculator and you get about 0.7475. Okay, so that would be your answer for that question. Now, it turns out that you actually don't have to transform a normal variable into a standard normal variable. You do if you're gonna use tables um, which is kind of how like your textbook assumes that you're doing these problems. But our calculator is actually smart enough to be able to do this itself if you just tell it the original information that you were given. So now that we kind of did that once, you guys do not have to do that ever again. I'm just gonna show you how you can straight up take the original information, put it in your calculator and get the answer. So you would still have to do normal CDF, and you would still wanna draw like your original curve if it helps you to just kind of get a visual. Um, but it would still be negative E99. And then your upper bound, you can just use that original 5.4.
and then your original mu or um, the average is 5.2 and then the original standard deviation was 0.3 so you put all that in and you should definitely try it out for yourself you can prove it to yourself that you do still get the exact same answer of 0.7475 so like the interpretation there is like if a doctor tells you that you have less than 5.4 liters of blood or you have 5.4 liters of blood, then you're like, okay, what does that mean? And it's just saying 74.75% of the population would have less blood in their system than you do? Yes. Or the probability of having less than the 5.4 liters is 74.75%? So wait, ask the question again. Like it's, I'm just saying, what is that, what, what is that interpretation? Like you have this area under this curve and we're saying that 74.75% of that area is to the left of that value 5.4, right? Yeah, so like you said, I mean, if you, you might be interested in the value 5.4 if your doctor determined that that's how much um, blood you have in your system. Mm -hmm. So you could, you know, do a problem like this if you were maybe concerned about that value to say that, all right, I figured out, you know, the percent of people that have less than 5.4 liters of blood in their system is 74.75%. Okay. So maybe like you're asking, is that a weird number? Because like you don't know what the scale is, but at 70, like you're within one standard deviation because the Z score was two thirds. So that seems pretty normal. You'd be like worried if you had like, I don't know, less than three or something liters of blood, right? Because that would be more than a one or two standard deviations away from the normal, from the mean. Yeah, I would say that would be concerning. Okay. Yep. It's kind of crazy that five, like that's five one liter bottles of soda, right? That's what's pumping through your veins. It seems like less than I would have thought. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about I, it too much. Well, I was just like thinking about like what all this means. And yeah. This. Okay, well, let's do a couple more. We'll keep okay. thinking. All right. Okay, so for an example seven, it says to qualify for a police academy, the candidates must score in the top 10% on a general, general ability test. Um, assume that test scores are normally distributed and that the test score test has a mean of 200. Um, and a standard deviation of 20. Find the lowest possible score to qualify. Okay, so we need to be in the top 10%. So we wanna know like what score will get us in that top uh, 10%. Definitely 200 is too low because that's right in the middle. Um, and then we wanna like get, I mean, in the top 10%, I don't know, that's, I'm thinking of like using the empirical rule. I think we wanna be like, around a little bit less than two standard deviations from the mean, but I guess we can figure this out exactly um, using the methods we just learned. So we want to figure out the, um, what do we want to do, the area to the left of that x value? Yep. So we're going to do, um, what's the command? Yeah, you tell me. It's uh, not normal CDF, it's the other one. So it's inverse normal? Yeah, okay. So it's because we, we want the x values, we want to do inv norm or inverse normal. And so then what we have to do is plug in the area to the left. Is that right? Yep. Do we currently know the area to the left? Um, isn't it 9.9? Yep. Okay. So we want to do inverse norm of 0.9. And then um, what else do we need to do? We need to plug in the, the mean, which is 200, and the standard deviation sigma, which is 20. And then when you plug that in, it should just give you the x value now. Yeah, sorry. Okay. And so that's what, 225.6. So like if you're studying this and you need to be in the top 10%, you say, okay, I have to get a 225.6. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get into the police academy. Yeah, so I think that's a really practical application where this would be useful. Yeah, it's like helping you set your goals, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and let's look at one more example. So it says, for a medical study, a researcher wishes to select people in the middle 60% of the population based on blood pressure, assuming that blood pressure readings are normally distributed and the mean um, systolic blood pressure is 120 and the standard deviation is eight. Find the upper and lower readings that would qualify to participate in the study. Okay, so um, let's see here. So it mentioned that the mean was 120, so I always like to label that, so I'm gonna put that in the middle there. And then it mentions uh, the middle 60%. So I can illustrate that on my curve um, by drawing it like that. So the middle 60% of the curve, I'll label that as 60%. And then what we're looking for is the lower and upper bounds on that 60%. So we're not just trying to find one X value in this problem, we're looking for two X values. So essentially you just wanna think of it as like two separate problems. So you're just gonna find your X one and then just kind of start over and find your X two. Okay, so if we wanna find X one, so remember, if you're finding the area under the curve, that is normal CDF. If you're actually looking for the X value or Z value, on that horizontal number line, that's when you use inverse norm. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's where you have to just figure out the area to the left of that value that you're trying to find. Well, if the middle represents 60%, then how can we figure out, you know, what's to the left there in this um, white area? The outside is 40%, so then that would be half of that, right? Perfect, yep, so it's 40% um, left over, and since it's symmetric, it would have to be 20% um, on each side. So that area to the left there in green is 0.2. So we'll do 0.2 comma mu and sigma. So it said the mean was 120, standard deviation was eight. Put that all into your calculator and you'll get that X1 is approximately 113.27. Okay, and then we'll um, do X2. So in order to find X2, we just need to know the area to the left of X2. Everything else is gonna be the same. We're still gonna do inverse norm and mean and sigma, mu and sigma stay the same. So Dr. Insko, what would that pink area be? Uh, 80%, you have 0 0.6 plus 0.2. Yep, good. So we'll do 0.8 as the area to the left. Put that in your calculator and you'll get that X2 is approximately 126.73. Okay, let's just do um, a couple of practice problems real fast here. Okay. So number one, um, it says the average annual number of jobs available for registered nurses is 103. 1,900. If we assume a normal distribution with a standard deviation of 8,040, find the probability that more than 80,000 but less than 95,000 jobs are available for RNs. Okay, so you kind of have to decide basically like which function should we use. So remember, if you're looking for the area under the curve, or a probability, both of those things are normal CDF. So we're gonna use normal CDF here, and um, our lower bound is 80,000, our upper bound is 95,000. And the mean they gave that to us, that was 103,900, and sigma is 8,040. Put all that in your calculator and you get 0.1327. Okay, and then part B says if the probability is 0.1977 that more than X amount of jobs are available, find the value of X. Okay, so let's kind of draw this out for ourselves. So we have our, our normal curve and we're looking for that X value. And it says that the probability, which remember is the same thing as the area underneath the curve, um, is that, wait, that the probability is that, that more than um, X amount of jobs are available. So since it's more than, I'm gonna shade to the right, and that's gonna be that 0.1977 value. 
Now, if we're looking for an X value on that number line, that's where we're going to have to do inverse norm. Mm -hmm. And in order to do inverse norm, you have to tell the calculator it's the area to the left. So right now we have the area to the right. So we'll do one minus the area to the right. That'll give us the area to the left. And then we'll do inverse norm with 0 0.8023. And the mean and standard deviation are still the same. And we get 110,732.92. And then since this was talking about number of jobs, we could round that to the nearest whole number. So we get 110,733 jobs. Cool. Any questions on that one? No, no, seems pretty clear. All right, would you like to take number two? Yeah, so the average per capita spending on healthcare in the US is 5,274. If the standard deviation is $600 and the distribution of healthcare spending is approximately normal, what is the probability that a randomly selected person spends more than 6,000? So we're doing a probability here or an area. So I think we want to use normal CDF and we want the probability that X is greater than 6,000. So that would be normal CDF, 6,000, and we want to go up to infinity, which is that E99 key. And then finally, we um, need to type in the mean, which is 5,274, and the standard deviation sigma is 600, and you hit enter, and we'll get the probability is about 11.331%, or 0.1131. Um, any questions on that piece? No. Nope. Okay. And then finally, we want to find the limits of the middle 50% of the individual healthcare expenditures. So this is where you might help to draw the curve if you can. And we're shading the, the green part. We want that, that green part is the 0 0.50. So if, the, if you're looking at the middle 50, then you know that the two outside like tails or wings is also gonna be 50%. And so uh, that left piece that's double shaded is 25%. The right piece that's not shaded at all is 25%. So we wanna find the limits X1 and X2 for that middle 50%. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do inverse normal um, of the 0.25, and then we have to type in the mean, which is 5,274, and the standard deviation, which is 600. And we get that the X1 value is uh, 4,869.31. Okay, so uh, I guess that's like the low, I guess this is kind of calculating um, quartiles, right? As far as expenditures goes? Yeah. So it seems like the, the first quartile is going to be um, $4,869.31, which is a lot of money to spend on healthcare, but it is what it is. Okay. And then for X2, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do inverse norm of um, 7, 0.75 and then the same mean and standard deviation. And let's see, we get $5,678.69. Is that the, it for this section? Or do we have another example? Nope, all that's right. all there is. Cool. I should maybe this is a good time to mention the reason I'm outside is because it's nap time for my for my kids, and so I didn't want to be talking. Usually, I'm holed up in my daughter's bedroom during the day, and during nap time, I moved outside. So I hope it isn't too loud out here for whoever's watching these videos. Hopefully, someone's watching. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thanks, Karen. Um, you said that you're going to do the last video just by yourself. They have another meeting to go to. Yep, I will go ahead and I'll do 6.3 for everyone. Cool, great.